Okay, so yes, sometimes story of my life. Um, I'm at a place with a family and we're taking photos at the end of the day. And I take the photo, but I'm not in the photo and I need to be in there. Usually what we do is we take the photo and then we take somebody out of the photo and say, okay, you take a snap with me in it. So we've got a collective of them. But being in the design space, I thought, you know, we should do it more intuitively and yes, get a tripod, which I probably take most of the time now. I'll just put a tripod in the boot of the car so that we have it uh, when we want to do a family pick. But in a case where you don't have it and you've just got your mobile phone, no tripod or stand to put it on, uh, what I suggest you do is you can take a photo and then you yourself go stand in the place there. Everybody clears out. You stand there and kind of in a position similar there because you'll have the same background, same lighting and everything. So you do it immediately after you've done the photo and you take one of yourself and you stand as if you're part of the group. You know, don't be too over excessively uh, posing, just kind of stand as if you were there and uh, yeah, then you have somebody take a photo of you and make sure nobody else is in the photo. Not like me who took the photo and had somebody else in the photo. <laughs> okay. What do they say? Don't, don't do what I do, do what I tell you to do. It's going to help you. Okay, so just also the pillar here, yeah, if you look at the pillars, just make sure they, you know, not too much distortion before you take it out here and go use. There's tons of AI programs that you can use. The key thing is if you're going to remove background is just to retain the quality of your image once the background is removed. So what I will do is I'm an Affinity Designer. Uh, I'm not going to be removing backgrounds in the software. I'll go out of it to go and do that. So we'll go into, let's see. I use this program and you see I've been fiddling with it. Yeah, but uh, I use Background Cut. It's a subscription that I got through AppSumo a while back. It's, you know, great in certain areas and others it's not but for purposes like this it will just work perfectly what i'm looking for is after i do a cutout i want the actual photo to be the same resolution as what i put in so what's the first step i take a photo of the group open that and i'm going to remove the people from the background in this group okay this thing is still in memory but it's loading now okay so it's going to take the people out because I'm going to place myself into that group. Okay, some people do it the other way around. They take themselves and then they bring the people in as a cutout. Uh, I use it this way because I'm going to place myself behind this group. Okay, just remember also when you're taking the photo, um, be aware that you want to take it with a bit of head clearance and at the bottom. Uh, of the photo you're going to put in so that if you need to shuffle it around or do certain stuff you've got the whole body and it's not kind of you want to move it higher but then the feet are cut off and then it's hanging up in the air if you if you do happen to see it there so we've got this and I'm going to go download high res and then I'm going to bring in a photo of myself also so there's downloaded that I'm going to bring in a photo of myself and also cut cut it out there we go and I can still do a bit of post-production and cut out the girly out of the photo here but I'm I'm going to do that in affinity I'll just you know crop the area it will work better once I've positioned the photo so I'm going to download high res so now I'm sitting with the group photo and I've got a photo of the group that's cut out and I've got a photo of me with the background in the proper lighting that was similar to the group and I've got one that's cut out with me so how do we go about doing it I'm going to just close all of these so that we we don't confuse ourselves further okay so I'm going to open the group one now the original one so there we have the group and I'll leave the lock on there so I don't inadvertently move it now if I go file I'm going to go place and I'm going to place the cut out of the group over it and that's why you've got to get it out of the background cut system where the quality is still the same else if you place if I go here now to the corner 
and I drag across here. If I, if I place an image here that is not the same quality as the background, let me just move it. You're going to notice it when I place it here. I'm going to just shift it back because you'll have the background, oops, the background normal, but the people will maybe be a bit blurry. So you want to make sure the quality is the same like the original. So I've got this. If I remove the the background, you'll see there. And if I switch off the foreground with the people in, you don't notice any difference because it's a, a replica, a duplicate, a perfect replica of what we have in the image. Okay, now onto this, I'm going to go and place my cutout. Okay. And yeah, I'm going to just do it because we're in Affinity Design or if you're Infinity Photo, you know, it's not like as to create smart objects and all that. The image keeps their quality. So I'm going to just pull that in there. And both these photos were taken with the same resolution. So I'm quite sure that by me sizing it proportionate to this one, it wouldn't lose any sort of quality. So here on this photo, I'm going to just click the Vector Crop tool and pull it there. For those of you who are trying to do a crop inside of a Affinity Photo, um, if you try and do this, which seems to be very simple, just, you know, do a, a crop, a normal crop, it doesn't work that way. If you do that, it crops the entire document and there's like workarounds. Whereas in, in Affinity Designer, you're not technically cropping it, you're creating a mask, but it does it um, sort of intuitively on the fly for you. Okay, so we got it there. Now how I do this is I just make sure that my head size is going to be similar to the person I'm standing next to. So if I look at him, uh, most probably I could just do a bit. We'll see where it goes to. Okay, so I'm going to move to the back there. So I'm here on this layer. I'm going to move it in between the cutout of the group and the background of the group. So there's different ways of doing it. Um, I use kind of shortcuts also, but you can go with control and your bracket, left bracket, and it will move it down. Okay, so now I'm the that looks a bit too big. Maybe bring it a bit smaller and position it there. Okay. So if, you, if you're looking at a photo like this, okay, the important thing is going to be the sizing so it doesn't look totally out of, out of sync in your sizing. And maybe I should even make it slightly smaller and push me up tall in real life. I'm probably up there. And there we go. So there we have a photo taken. Oh, the other thing is also when you do take the photo, kind of think about where you're going to position yourself. Don't have everybody standing and you have no place to go. And if I remove the front layer now, you'll see where I am. <laughs> it looks kind of weird, but in that context, it looks perfect. So that's how I do it. Um, just a, a revision of it. Take the group photo. Take a photo of you standing in a relative position, leave a space in the group for you, not an obvious space, you know, you've got to be as if it's taken. And then this is how you insert yourself. Uh, cut out the group, place it on its own background, cut yourself out, place it in between the two there. And you can see here that the lighting and that is going to not going to be a problem because you, you're taking it with, at the same time, it's basically a few seconds after you've taken the original. Um, I go like, okay, everybody clear the area. Now take this photo of me. I stand, I smile, maybe do two or three of them. And then I know I've got that. Then the party can go on or the goodbyes can go on after that. And also if, if your feet are sort of in awkward positions over there, um, you could place like if, if your foot is out there and it looks like it's hanging in the air, you could put some contact shadows and that sort of thing. But in a case like this, this works out quite fine here. So hopefully you find some sort of methodology to doing this uh, placement of an individual in. Um, this is not going to work well if you, you're taking a photo in a different environment, different lighting, then you're going to spend a lot of time trying to tweak it. It's going to be kind of on the same time, same day, um, a couple of seconds from each other, keeping all the aspects together. 
Okay, so yeah, hopefully that helps. Be blessed and shalom to everybody.